So let's run through what each of the accumulators are. There are three transactional accumulators that look uh, actual transactions that occur. They each look at different things. The buy-sell looks for certain kinds of transactions that I believe to be buy-sell. Now, how do I know that? Well, when I was a portfolio manager back in the 80s and 90s, and when I started writing uh, the accumulator in the uh, late 1990s, I would routinely make large purchases for our portfolios. These would be block transactions or transactions that were in excess of 10 to 20,000 shares. And I knew what prints on the tape were mine. And I knew what I was doing. So I programmed the buy-sell to identify my trades. So if I could identify my trades, I knew whether they were buys or sells. Then uh, one would expect that uh, any other trade that occurred like that would also be a buy and sell. So this particular accumulator looks for large block transactions. And if we uh, increase our volume scaler a little bit, we can see what some of these are. If we use our mouse button and right click we can see that uh, and we put it over it we can see up in the data bar up in the top that this particular trade occurred on 8-1 at 1337 this particular bar had a high of 192.71 a low of 192.53 a close of 192.64 we can see the whoops we can see the level of the accumulator there at about 900,000 shares we can see the difference for that bar was up 125,680 shares we can see for that that particular one minute bar that there was 136,816 up volume and 11,136 down volume uh, flip ups flip downs those are um, something that we'll talk about at another time and the horizontal bar we can find the close on that bar and if we move our cursor up we can see the level there was 192.56 so under the buy sell and with any of the transactional accumulators we can look to see in the feed how much of that trade were generated by algos or dark pools so let's uh, click algos only and we can see now that the accumulator line looks a lot different now this shows only algo trades and if we go over this we can see that those numbers have changed somewhat the up volume and the down volume is now different. We can see under all on that trade, we can see that it uh, was 136. If we go to algos only, we can see that was 136 as well. So we can see that all of that volume was uh, uh, algo volume there. If we go to dark pools, we can see that's completely disappeared. So we can see that that burst caused by algorithmic trading systems. So that's the buy sell. Now let's switch down to liquidity. The way to think about liquidity is, if there were out taking offers, we would see the accumulator rise. If they were out slamming the bids, we would see the accumulator fall. And in this case, what we see is uh, selling as the price here in the early part of the day was rising. We can see that the accumulator was falling and falling and falling. So all during these times when, the accumulate, when price was rising, they were still selling into that. And we can see here that as price was moving down into this level, from here down into here, we can see that the accumulator was rising. So they were buying. So here they were obviously shorting into this move. And then as the price come, came down to a certain level, uh, equal to the uh, opening lows of the day, they started buying, and which means that they were covering their shorts. And there could be new longs coming in here as well. So here you see a low right in through here. Here you see a low in the accumulator. Here you see a lower low in price. Here you see a higher low in the accumulator. And then these levels hold. You can see that they buy more strongly here. And then they start taking profits in this level again here. So let's turn off these trend lines. Oh, by the way, to draw a trend line, you simply hold the right mouse button down, then you hold the left mouse button down and drag the, the line to the right, then you release the left mouse button, and then you release the right mouse button, and that makes your line, and that line will hold in through the entire day. We come up here to trend lines, and we can clear them all. 
So let's run through the algos and the dark pools on liquidity and see what they were doing. So let's draw in a line to represent what the full feed looks like. And it generally goes like this. Okay. Now let's switch here to algos only. And now these are only algo trades. And we can see that relative to the overall line uh, that uh, we get some extension here and some extension down here. And you can see that uh, relative to the overall volume line, the average volume level in algo trades was above the full feed. You can see how full feed is down there. Algo volume is up here. And let's switch over to, uh, let's draw in a set of lines for the algos. Oops. Let's say they come down to about here. And then they're up about here. And then they're up about there. And now let's switch to dark pools. You can see the dark pools quite a bit different. They were selling uh, pretty much all the time through here. A little bit of bump up through here and then they sold the balance of the day. So you can see that relative to the overall volume that uh, the overall volume for the day of algorithmic trading was much larger uh, but uh, that dark pools were sellers pretty much the entire day. So let's get rid of all of our uh, lines. We'll go back to all. Now the third transactional accumulator is the raw tick. And there's the raw tick. Now the raw tick is simply up tick volume minus down tick volume. For stocks like SPY that have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of ticks during the day or more, uh, in fact there would be millions of ticks, I've seen 42,000 ticks in a single second. The raw tick is not too predictable. Simply too many ticks during the day. On lightly traded stocks, stocks with low volume, or very thinly traded stocks, the tick, raw tick can be very useful. Uh, but on a stock like SPY, uh, it's not as much. But here if we see that overall they were selling in the first part of the day and into this low, uh, you can see it rising. And this is one of the most powerful accumulator patterns to watch for is when the accumulator rises as price falls. So here we can see that from this point here we can see that stock prices are generally declining here and the accumulator is rising into this low. That's a very powerful pattern. It's po called positive divergence and when it occurs into a low uh, that's really what you need to watch for and conversely when it falls into a rise that also was very important here. You see the negative divergence here. Price rising here and price falling here. And we saw that on the liquidity, which is the main directional accumulator that we want to look for for SPY. And also on the raw tick here. So let's go through and look to see what the algos were doing. See it looks like that. It doesn't show any positive divergence into the low. And on the dark pools uh, the raw tick on the dark pools show them uh, that we do see some positive divergence there. But again, we really don't want to watch raw tick for SPY because of the simply the amount of ticks. But uh, from time to time, and certainly as you're watching it over a range of minutes, uh, it can be useful. And again, depending on how you trade and what things that you want to look for, um, it may be of, of value to you. So let's switch it back here to all. And we'll go up to trend lines and we'll clear all of our trend lines. Now, let's look at market pressure. And we can see that our volume bars here are, are too large, so we'll click our volume scaler. And a note here, uh, each of the volumes are going to be different for each accumulator. Because uh, that's what it's looking at is the volume for that particular accumulator. Market pressure looks at the visible supply of bids and offers. In a strong market you would expect to see bids come in under the current price level so that as price moves back down within its range uh, institutions will want to buy into lower prices. A weak market has more offers than bids and as price moves up you'll see greater offers and greater sizes come in and that's what the market pressure accumulator looks for, the visible supply of bids and offers. And for SPY, we use it to give us a read on what the liquidity accumulator is telling us. For every symbol that you look at, 
you're going to find that one accumulator will be predictive of future price direction. Each of the accumulators are accurate in what they're measuring, but not all accumulators are predictive of future price direction. For SPY, the liquidity is our main directional indicator that we watch, and the market pressure gives us a bias to how strong or how weak that particular trend that the liquidity accumulator is identifying is. So in this case, for this day that we're looking at, which happens to be August 1st, we can see that the market opens, it gaps down, and our market pressure is rising. The price comes up, and the market pressure starts turning down here at about 942 and starts moving lower. You're going to want to watch the raw accumulator, which is the magenta line. The blue line is our smooth line, and it's simply smoothing the raw accumulator. And in another video, we'll show you how to deal with that. Uh, but for now, just keep every all the settings the way they are. We can go up to parameters and change all of our smoothing numbers here. But we'll go into that later. So what we see here in the opening gap down is the market pressure is rising. Our liquidity accumulator, we see that they're selling into that move. And if we look to see our market pressure turns down uh, and with the selling on the liquidity, we know that this high is not going to hold. That we have negative divergence and that move up is, is going to fail. So we see that our market pressure starts moving down. We get these small little counter trend moves, but the market pressure stays negative. We see that our accumulator on our liquidity is showing positive divergence into this low. And we expect that this low would then hold. If we come to our numbars and increase our numbars, we can go back and look to see a prior level. And we see that there's no prior level there, so we'll go back and we use 405 data points we'll see the entire day so we see this low that comes in but uh, as the market uh, moves back up into the range we can see that our market pressure was negative the entire time it flattens out here but uh, had we seen this market pressure turn up into this low at the same time that the liquidity did then we would have expected to not only come back up to this high but probably take it out as well now when we look at market pressure, uh, notice here that uh, if we switch to algos or dark pools, it, it doesn't matter what we see. The volume will change a little bit, but uh, the market pressure, we always want to watch the entire market. So it's programmed simply to look at the entire feed. So that's the four basic accumulators with the 11 different combinations. Let's look at another stock. Let's bring in Apple, which you have data for. So we'll come up here to Symbol or hit F3 on our keyboard. We'll type in Apple. We'll hit Return. One thing that you can do when you bring in a symbol, you get it the way you want it. Say you don't want to look at uh, volume on price. And say we want to watch the whole day 405 bars, which we get by putting into our numbars. By the way, on the numbars, we have these individual selectors or we can type in a number up to 2500 and there's 2500 one minute periods you can't see more than 2500 so we've got it to 405 bars we've got to set it to market pressure so if we want that window to always open up that way we simply come up here to ch chart options and click save current for symbol if we do save current for def as default then every window will open up that way and we don't want to do that so if we click save current for symbol the next time we open up Apple, it'll come in this way. If you wanted to set it for dark pools, uh, which I don't recommend, you should always be watching uh, your accumulator under all. Say you're watching the liquidity, you always want to look at all and only switch between algos and dark pools during the day to see what things are happening uh, during the day. So for Apple, the market pressure is our main directional accumulator. Uh, and here you can see that during the day we get this range trading thing going on and the market pressure is pretty flat. And then beginning here at uh, about 1323, we see the market pressure take off. Price really hasn't done anything. You see it's still trading within its range. And here we get a big uh, expansion bar up here. Uh, we get a little extension up on the accumulator and then the price takes off. 
So when you see the accumulator rise like this, especially as you're moving up into a resistance level, so here's, here's one resistance level, here's our support level down and through here. So you can see as it comes up into this resistance level, when you see the market pressure move up like that, it's going to take out that level. And if we switch over to liquidity, we can see that they were selling all through that level. We switch to algos, you can see that the algos were selling through there. And we switch over to dark pools, we can see they were selling there. So we wouldn't have really expected to see price take out these levels because of the selling going through there. Uh, but it did. And the market pressure, which is our main directional accumulator. So what this told us, by the liquidity moving down while market pressure move, was moving up, was that uh, this was a weak move. It wasn't being supported by both accumulators. And had you bought this low, when you saw the market pressure start to move up, uh, you probably wouldn't have had a target much higher than this level right here. And you can see that uh, at that price, when it got to that level, it uh, moved back down into that range. And as it, even though the market pressure uh, was rising, it took that level out, even though the uh, liquidity showed selling. So that's the basic tutorial on uh, starting your program and running through each of the four different accumulators.